You don't have to buy the PDF. You get the full book in PDF format for free, regardless of whether or not you back the Kickstarter. So, oh, wow. you know, you buy the book because you like this physical, beautiful book and you want it as a coffee table book or you want it on your bookshelf and everyone in your games group can just have the PDF for free. Welcome to the Character Sheet, comicbook.com's official home for all things tabletop and fantasy. I'm Christian Hoffer, one of the hosts of this channel. And to today, oh, wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And today, I am joined by two very special guests. Uh, they are uh, the uh, some of the uh, voices, people behind a brand new tabletop RPG project and transmedia project that's coming out soon called uh, Brilliant Ruin. Uh, I'm talking with uh, Paxton Galvanic and uh, Justin Achilles. Hello. Uh, how are you both doing today? Doing great. Doing awesome. Great. Thing. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and uh, it's it's just an Achilles singular. singular. I uh, yeah, singular. I apologize. We even went over this, and I still managed to get your name wrong. I'm uh, the other one hurt his ankle, so don't no. worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that. Um, so uh, you know, Brilliant Ruin just got announced a few weeks ago. Why don't we uh, start with what is Brilliant Ruin? Uh, give me the elevator pitch for this. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, our Brilliant Ruin is um, an upstairs, downstairs human drama with uh, Edwardian aesthetics set at the end of the world uh, in, a in a fictional world. Uh, so, you know, we have all of these wonderful uh, estates, these lovely houses. If you want to think of something like, you know, Downton Abbey or Gosford Park or Gilded Age, these, you know, just tremendous ostentatious places, but they're all doomed. They're in their nadir because here comes the end of the world. The ruin is approaching the world. World, uh, which is light from a dead star that has made its way to this world uh, and is reacting with it terribly. It's corroding metal. Uh, it is turning people into monsters. It's poisoning the seas. And so uh, our question with our brilliant ruin is, you've got precious little time left. What are you going to do with it? Uh, and of the many different factions in the game, each one of them answers that differently. And you get to be a player character in one of those factions. Okay, uh, so this is, you know, uh, our uh, Brilliant Rune, it's not uh, a 5e project or anything like this. You guys are using a bespoke, brand new game system. So uh, tell me tell me a little bit about that. What's, what's the core mechanics? What do you do in it? All that jazz. Absolutely, yes. It is an original system. Uh, it's a dice pool system. So if you've played games in the World of Darkness or things like Shadowrun, uh, you'll be familiar with dice pool systems. Uh, but the way the mechanics for our Brilliant Ruin work are... How are you attempting to solve the problem? We take your emotional state or your personality approach, uh, as well as combining it with your skill, and those two numbers generate uh, your dice pool. You roll that many dice. Mm -hmm. uh, the dice that, uh, they're six-sided dice, so you can play it you know, probably with any dice that you've got lying around the house, uh, but of course gamers have plenty of dice. Uh, but you want sixes, right? Sixes are brills, and the more brills you get, the more successful your outcome is. Ones are glooms, and you want more brills than glooms. If you get three brills, it's a triumph. And if you get more glooms than brills, it's a catastrophe. Uh, and uh, there also is a system by which you can augment that dice pool. Uh, it's called the passion system. If you really, really feel strongly about something, you can invest it with your emotion. And uh, you get two extra dice if you invoke passion. And once you add those dice, uh, they increase the success threshold. You get brills on fives and sixes. But eventually, if you use your passion dice too much, you're going to get, uh, if you invoke passion too much, you have to throw the passion dice, and they only generate bad results. So if you push yourself too hard, too long, catastrophe is going to occur. Okay. So taking a, taking a step back. Okay. So Brilliant Ruin, this is, this is you know, Downton Abbey meets the apocalypse. Um, how, how'd you guys come up with this? Like, and, and why try, why decide to turn it into a tabletop RPG? <laughs> it's a, it's a great question. I've been wanting to do something like this for years. Uh, I love the aesthetics of the Edwardian period. Uh, and so I wanted to take all of those fancy clothes and lovely houses and kind of turn players loose in them. Mm -hmm. uh, and having it be uh, at the apocalypse or having it happen at the end of the world is just a great way to kind of impose a sense of urgency uh, on the characters. We didn't want to do this as a purely historical setting. You know, it is a fictitious world. Um, and so uh, this is a chance for us to, you know, get those monster antagonists in there, uh, to have vampires in there among the uh, all of the high society balls, to have, you know, horrible things coming into the estates from outside. You know, if you imagine uh, the sort of rolling hills with the beautiful estate on it, the warm light coming out of the windows and a beautiful party happening inside and of course this ravening monster 
uh, outside making its way toward the uh, toward the estate uh, or one of the giant silicogenetics one of these uh, rogue machines that's out there uh, just eating its way across the countryside uh, with the estate uh, in its way there uh, and so you know we've got those those excellent you know external conflicts in there but I love intercharacter or interpersonal drama as well and so it's mm -hmm. all built around factions on top of that right you have a group of aristocrats five different families you can choose from you have a group of the true folk the kind of everyman uh, or common group and you know five different guilds among them or you might want to be one of the unbonded one of the uh, the outsiders the, the rebels the people trying to to tear it all down and change things because the end of the world is coming let's do it better than this and so there are plenty of inbuilt uh, conflicts there and plenty of external conflicts all of which create this lovely sense of urgency so um you know talking talking a little bit about the world here um you know why why are these states you know like you know safe so to speak or you know we we have this ruin that seems to be surrounding these states but you know the people are able to travel between these estates so why why are these states safe and you know what what happened to everyone else yeah, uh, the ruin is imperfect. Uh, as we just talked about just a couple minutes ago, um, it is this kind of deadly or corrosive starlight, and it affects things differently in different places. Uh, one of the regions or the primary region in which the game is set is called the Dramark, uh, and the Dramark is literally all that's left of the world, uh, and it happens to be so because there's a lot of mountainous territory. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, the mountains themselves shield these areas uh, from the starlight that's coming in. Uh, you can't go in the seas anymore. The seas are ruined. You know, the light has made it into the water and the water refracts this poison starlight so they're practically useless at this point and so all that remains in the Dramark is you know this kind of uh, shady valley uh, which can be as big or as small as you want it to be uh, as your storytelling group prefers uh, but then uh, you know as you say the homes are safe in them because they have the most resources devoted to them. There's definitely a sense of, of have and have not at play here and so the people who can afford to keep things the safest typically tend to. Okay um and you know the 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 kind of the next question that, that comes up is you know talking you know usually when we think about tabletop rpgs you know this seems like more in line with something almost like uh you know, like as you mentioned earlier like vampire the masquerade where you know it's it's more built upon you know interpersonal conflict it, both internal and external conflict as opposed to like a combat based system or anything like that so you know is, is this a game that relies heavily on more social mechanics um, or, you know, is, is there like a robust combat system at play? Like, you know, uh, how, how much, uh, am I going to be throwing a grid on, on the table and moving space <laughs> around? Uh, you probably won't throw a grid on the table, but you might want to put something in front of you suggesting, you know, here's the letter you found, or here's a rough layout of the estate that we're all occupying right now. Here's where the ballroom is compared to the, uh, uh, the, 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 um, broom closet, right? Where a secret liaison is going to occur. Um, and it definitely relies more, um, I wouldn't say exclusively on social interaction. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of that is the player to player or between the player and game master. Uh, but there is, uh, you know, that that dice pool system does all of the resolution. Uh, the combat system is uh, uses the same resolution system as you know, determining if you uh, are a great performer uh, or if you have adequately sneaked through uh, the house there. Um, and yeah, a lot of this draws on uh, the social dynamics of things like Vampire the Masquerade. You know, I've worked on Vampire the Masquerade in the World of Darkness for almost 30 years. Uh, so I wanted to take a lot of the learnings from that uh, and put them into this original new environment. Okay. No, I mean, that 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 makes a lot of sense. The more the more, more I hear of this, the more I'm like, okay, this this uh you know, this feels like a different kind of vampire game, you know, like a, a game in like a world of darkness type of, of setting, which hilariously, it is kind of a world of darkness. <laughs> um, just, just came up with that. Uh, I swear, you know, that, that was that was spontaneous right there. Um, OK, so obviously this is a pretty seems like a pretty dynamic world, uh, you know, uh, and when this was announced, it was meant announced as more than just a tabletop RPG game. There's like a transmedia element. So talk to me a little bit about the, the wider plans here for, for this, you know, like what, what do you guys envision this becoming? Um, you know, what, what else do you have in the works? So to speak. It's just an architect that one. Sure. So um, uh, our, our company studio Hermitage, uh, we are part of, Amplifier Game Invest, which is part of the Embracer Group. Embracer okay. Group is a huge multimedia company, owns Dark Horse Comics, owns Asmodee, owns Gearbox, huge. So we're a part of that, and we were founded and with the idea of being a transmedia company. So we started a little over a year ago. Justin and I had a chance to work together when we were at uh, Funcom working on a Dune project and working on a, a mutant project, a 
a couple projects over there. Um, but we had a great relationship and we said, you know, let, let's form this company together. We have some investment opportunity here. And we founded the company with that transmedia approach. So we we are creating, we created this intellectual property, our brilliant ruin first as like a container area for stories. Like we want lots of different stories told within this universe. So we spent months creating a very rich story background history characters environments we had a lot of concept artists working on it so we have this beautiful ip built first and then we're translating that through multiple medias like and products after the fact so i can tell you right now the ttrpg is the first product that's going to hit market we are going to be doing a kickstarter with it um, and then it's going to retail and and stores after that we have a lot of other projects that are kind of lining up which are um an audio drama. We're doing a 10 episode series oh, wow. audio drama, um, you know, very soap opera y, you know, but 10 episodes. We have some, um, we have some famous actors that are kind of signing on board with us right now to do that, which is going to be really exciting. So that's going to be toward the end of the year is when we plan on releasing that. Um, we are also doing a comic book series with Dark Horse. Uh, so that's part of that Embracer, you know, umbrella. We want to utilize the companies that are part of uh, our organization. So we reached out to Dark Horse. They're doing a comic book series right now with us. Um, so you're going to see some comic books and uh, kind of a compilation graphic novel at the end. Um, and then we're also developing a video game internally. So uh, I'm, you know, building right now we're prototyping, but we have a, a video game team kind of working on a video game for our brilliant ruins. So we have a couple other projects kind of um, pokers in the fire, let's say, but these are the, the the first four products that we are going to launch to market. So it's exciting, you know, all of them will tell different stories, but all of them will give, you know, consumers a different view of the world. It's not like you need to play the TTRPG to understand what's happening with the comic book. But if you want to get a bigger picture of the world, it's all going to be there for you. Uh, so, you know, let have I have so many questions? <laughs> um, uh, when 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 deciding to you know the right now you know tabletop RPGs are really hot and um, you know usually we see you know IPs being brought into the tabletop RPG space, but here it seems like you know you guys are not only you know using the tabletop RPG space to launch an IP, um, you're you're also kind of you know using that to like form form the foundation. So why why did you think that you know the tabletop RPG space was the right place to launch an IP like our brilliant ruin? I guess I can start with that, Justin. I'll hand it off to you. But first and foremost, we wanted to create a product that would give something physical as a world and art bible. Somebody can just pick up, look through, be like. Wow! Look at these characters. Look at this rich environment. Look at the, look at a game um, mechanic that's different and unique. So it, it's something physical that somebody can actually dive into. That's not just you know a comic book's going to be fun. Like you're going to tell a story, but with the TTRPG, you're going to get such a rich world in in a, a book, like and mm -hmm. available as a PDF. So we want a uh, low barrier of entry to kind of understand the world that we're creating. So um, it was kind of a no brainer for us to to do this and get this out there just to have that world and art bible that can get people excited about what we're doing so justin i'll hand it to you if i if there's anything else sure sure yeah i i want to echo that right like uh, a, a ttrpg is a fantastic way to start experiencing the world um it's a great way to uh get players involved from the get-go and so that's why we want to release it to get people telling their own stories to start imagining their place in the world oh and then they can experience some other stories too right because games are interactive we start with the players telling their stories and then also get to tell them stories in the form of the comic book and in the audio drama you know these are traditional linear media uh, but then we move back into uh, interactive media in the form of the video game and you know again a TTRPG is just a great place to start all that. It gives you a world and says go, and then we can use that for the World Bible uh, as we build out the video game and as we collaborate with writers to create comic books and artists to create comic books. Uh, Rachel, who is working on the video game as well, Rachel J. Wilkinson, um, is doing the audio drama. Uh, she has uh, experience in building audio drama. She's award nominated uh, with several of her publications there. Uh, and so, you know, everybody brings a different skill to the table at the studio, uh, and we're looking at turning those into the way for storytelling uh so let's let's talk a little bit about the kickstarter so why why are you launching a kickstarter um uh, you know and the the obvious question that some people will ask is um you know you guys are owned by embracer group uh you have ties to to one of the largest you know media corporations in the world so why launch a kickstarter and you know why should people back it you want to take it Justin? yeah sure yeah i uh, this question is good because uh i i i want to 
start building community. And I think Kickstarter is a great way to do that, right? This is a great way to immediately find other people who are interested in it as well, because you see other backers there. And mm -hmm. so uh, what we're actually kickstarting is uh, the physical product itself. You're backing the printing of the book. You'll get a physical copy of the book. And actually, uh, everyone who uh, is, is backing the Kickstarter is helping make the PDF freely available to everyone. Uh, you don't have to buy the PDF. You get the full book in PDF format for free, regardless of whether or not you back the Kickstarter. So, oh, wow. you know, you buy the book because you like this physical, beautiful book and you want it as a coffee table book or you want it on your bookshelf and everyone in your games group can just have the PDF for free, right? And so uh, the Kickstarter then helps us, you know, not to get into the finance here, but everything gets paid for and everyone gets a copy. Okay. Um, what sort of, uh, you know, beyond just the physical book, are there going to be stretch goals, uh, anything like that? You know, the usual Kickstarter stuff, like what any, any sort of bonus goodies for folks. Paxton, I'll give you that one. Sure. Here. Um, so I know we've announced, or I guess we haven't truly announced them just yet. Maybe while you're watching this video, they, it might be announced. Um, but we, we know we're doing custom dice with it. Um, we are going to be doing a, uh, a standard edition book and then a brilliant edition um, with beautiful gold embossing. So it's going to be a, a beautiful premium book. Um, there's going to be ribbon upgrades, paper uh, upgrades. What else did we have? We had... Um, uh, supplements like uh, periodicals that we were thinking of, of doing as uh, stretch goals, where you can, yeah, I, I think like a what is it, a home home and garden magazine, but it has you know maybe recipes or things within our world, it just gives you a better picture of what's within this world. So there's going to be a couple of these little supplements that can go with it, um, and then some fun little things that you might be able to uh, to purchase to really interact with the environment. Those are going to be the the big stretch goals, but we're not necessarily releasing those just yet. But we have some in mind that that you can kind of maybe customize things things or be part of things so there's there's going to be some really fun stuff uh you know as the the big stretch goals yep um so uh la last couple of questions is there going to be you know beyond the fact that you know obviously you guys are going to be making a digital pdf you know uh, that's a digital will there be any other sort of like digital component to the actual you know rpg like you know are you looking at partnering with a platform like demiplane or you know something like that um to to you know create toolkits or anything like that um, Justin, I, I know we, we don't necessarily like have an app or something like that, but yeah. we have partnered with um, Alchemy RPG to do a digital version of it. So we have a partnership with them. So once the um, once it's finalized and it's out there, they are going to be creating a digital version and having it available online to play digitally. So Alchemy is a partner of ours. And there are other partnerships uh, currently in uh, exploration as well um, that will potentially be part of those stretch goals. Okay. Um, and, and this is truly the last question. So if, if you are somebody who's watched this video and has, um, you know, decided that this sounds like a really cool project, um, w will there be play tests or will there be opportunities to play this live somewhere before the, the game itself launches? Yeah, that's uh, one of the things that we really wanted to um, offer the community as it starts to shape up through the Kickstarter is that free PDF you get before the physical book comes into print and you get it before the mass public release. Um, mm -hmm. Also, we are currently planning on, we just got our uh, hotel reservations today. Come join us at Gen Con. There's events happening at Gen Con. We're putting those together right now as well. So Gen Con 2024, we'll see you there. Uh, and we've got a couple of other uh let's say surprises, some, some tricks up our sleeve that uh, Danny is working on putting together for community right now. Yeah, Danny's our marketing manager. And uh, we're like Justin said, we're going to be building a big community around this. So we're, we're, we're hiring community people. We're going to have a beautiful Discord. Um, it, we just want to build a community around this IP. Um, so that, that's going to be one of the, the main things that we are doing right now. Okay. Well, fantastic. Um, well, um, by the time this video comes live, the Kickstarter will be launched for our brilliant ruin. Uh, you know, if, if you have ever listened to me ramble about anything, you know that I love me some Downton Abbey, Jane Austen stuff. So this game is literally like a day one uh, backing for me. Uh, you guys should check it out. Uh, you know, thank you both for coming on. Um, this was this was a pleasure. Can't wait to see the game itself. Um, you know, be sure to check out their Kickstarter. Um, uh, do you guys have any socials or, you know, where, where else can you guys be found? Uh, you know, either the studio the or socials. you personally. Yeah. All the we're going to be yeah we're going to be launching ourbrilliantruin.com very shortly but you could find us on uh, X and Facebook and Instagram uh, 
what else do we have? Um, I think the threads. Uh, Danny's uh, running one on threads. Yeah, we're yeah, all over the yeah. place, man. Yeah, we have a YouTube page where we you, there's actual videos where you can learn about the factions and the ruin. There's little videos put together there, and we have, we have a 90 second uh, trailer there as well. So there, there's uh, most of the social media we're trying to tackle right now. Okay. Well, uh, until until next time, uh, you know. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video, and be sure to like and subscribe and do all the YouTube things. And until then, we'll talk to you later.